Welcome to Untested Builds, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And today's gonna be a little different because we're actually revisiting my one quick build on the channel that I made for Shadowcat from Fox's X-Men movies. This time around, we're going to focus more on her animated and comic book appearances, where not only has she been an X-Men, but also a member of Excalibur, which was like a UK-based Avengers team, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and even took over for Star-Lord in the Guardians of the Galaxy once upon a time. Her power to use density shifting to face through solid objects is mostly the same, but she has a lot more creative uses for it in the comics. Oh, and she's got a psychic link with a pet alien dragon, so let's grab one of those two while we're at it. For our goals for this build, we need to be able to walk through walls, which turns out is surprisingly difficult to do in a game literally called Pathfinder. We'll get there, I promise, but we won't exactly have everything we need by level 8. Second, Critic Pride can phase through more than just walls. We need something for floors, ceilings, weapons, people, and terrain in general. Ultimate freedom is what we're going for here. And last, we need a dragon from space. Or any plane, honestly, we're not really that picky. For our stats, we're starting yet again with 18 dexterity. If we ever even pick up a weapon, it's most likely gonna be ranged or finesse, and really only the Ultimate Universe version has any feats of strength. Intelligent Charisma at 14, we might have started out as a fresh-faced newcomer to the team, but at this point, we have led our own teams on several occasions. Wisdom at 12, we've got a little life experience, but not everything can be high. Constitution and Strength are at 10, we'd rather just avoid getting hit instead of tanking. And like I said, Earth 1616 Shadowcat isn't known for throwing cars, at least right now. For our skills, we're trained in basically everything. This is usually why I like to stick to theatrical and animated adaptations of characters. Once someone gets a few decades of publication history, they start racking up canon feats for literally every situation. For our skill increases, we're going to focus on acrobatics, society, and diplomacy and make them legendary proficiency. When I started making mutants for the channel, the goal was to stop using versatile and skilled humans for basically every character. As a member of Homo Superior, Kitty Pride is still a human, but with some funky DNA with, uh, so we're going to go, let's see here, uh, Oread. Yep, human Oread for no particular reason at all. And also low light vision. We'll take the academic background. We were in high school for like 25 years, so we've got some experience. We get training in crafting in academia lore and the skill training fee for free to get training in an extra skill of our choice. Take whatever you need for your campaign because like I said, we're grabbing everything eventually. For our ancestry feat, natural ambition gives us a first level class feat of our choice because not only are humans the most versatile ancestry, it turns out they're also just plain better at their class than you. For our class, we're going to lock in as a monk. In addition to our X-Men training, we've also been personally trained in the ways of the Samurai by Wolverine, and we were like possessed by a ninja assassin or something, and when we gained control of our body back, we didn't lose any of the skills, so that was cool. Level 1 monks gain powerful fists to upgrade our unarmed fist attacks from D4s to D6s, and we no longer take the minus 2 penalties to perform lethal attacks with our fists. We also get Flurry of Blows to spin in action to make 2 unarmed strikes, combining their damage if we choose the same target for the purposes of overcoming resistances. For our class feeds, Key Strike gives us a focus pool and the ability to cast Key Strike Focus Spell, allowing us to make either an unarmed strike or a flurry of blows and gain a plus one status bonus to our attack rolls and deal an additional 1d6 damage on the hit. This is probably the one time I'll say I missed the old Touch AC mechanics from first edition, so we're gonna just consider this attack bonus and overcoming resistances to be phasing through armor. For our additional class feat from Natural Ambition, Monastic Weaponry allows us to use simple and martial weapons with the monk trait in place of unarmed attacks when using monk feats and abilities. And when our proficiency increases with unarmed attacks, we also increase our proficiency with simple and martial monk weapons. And with that, we've covered half of the monk feats for the build. Gonna get kinda weird after this. We'll take the quick squeeze feat to squeeze at 5 feet per round on a success and 10 feet on a crit. And once we're legendary in acrobatics, we can squeeze at our full movement speed instead because half of this build is all about being as slippery as possible. The other half is getting our hands on a pet psychic dragon. The witch dedication eventually gives us both by giving us a familiar we can name Lockheed along with primal spells from the wild patron. None of the cantrips are super in character, so take whatever for now. We'll change it up in a couple of levels. Level 3 monks gain incredible movement for a plus 10 status bonus to speed when we're not wearing armor, increasing by 5 feet for every 4th level we gain past the 3rd. Mystic Strikes makes our unarmed attacks magical for the purposes of overcoming resistances because what is armor to someone who can phase through anything? We'll take the Feather Step general feat to ignore difficult terrain when we make a step. The Catfall feat lets us ignore an amount of distance when determining fall damage to simulate activating our phasing right at the last minute of a fall. The amount we ignore increases with our acrobatics proficiency, eventually negating it entirely once we're legendary. We'll pick up some basic witch spell casting for Feather Fall so we can negate fall damage for our allies too and you don't even have to be in contact with them. How convenient. 
Level five monks gain expert strikes to increase our proficiency in unarmed strikes to expert and alertness for expert perception proficiency. We'll pick up the adapted cantrip ancestry feat to gain access to a cantrip that's more suited to our mutant ability. Chill touch forces a fortitude save on a creature in touch range, dealing 1d4 plus our intelligence modifier of negative damage to a living creature and giving them a feeble one for one round on a crit and making an undead creature flat-footed for a round on a fail and fleeing for one round if they critically fail. Level six basic witch spellcasters gain a second level spell. There aren't too many electronic gadgets to disrupt on Galarian, but the spell magic can turn off an ongoing spell or magic item for 10 minutes so long as you succeed on a counteract check. We'll take the steady balance feats to represent our gymnastics training. We gain a critical success results whenever we succeed on a balance check and we're no longer flat-footed while attempting to balance on narrow surfaces or on even ground and we can use our acrobatics to grab an edge when falling instead of our reflex save. The enhanced familiar witch feat gives Lockheed two more abilities, so I'll list everything we're gonna be taking. Manual dexterity, speech, touch telepathy, and flight to give us pretty much everything Lockheed needs, but we're gonna grab a few more things later. Level seven monks gain weapon specialization for an additional two damage with our unarmed strikes and monk weapons, and we choose our first path to perfection to gain master proficiency and critical success results on regular successes in a saving throw of our choice. We're going reflex because we might as well take advantage of our main stat and it would be weird if the girl who can phase through stuff ever got hit by anything she actually saw coming. We'll take the breath control feat to hold our breath up to 25 times longer than usual and gain a plus one circumstance bonus against inhale threats and critical success results on regular successes. Shadowcat used to have to hold her breath when phasing through objects, but they kind of forgot that in the comics. But my memory is eternal. Well, it's about as eternal as the wiki page that is. Quiz me in a year and we'll see what I remember. Level eight basic witch spell casters gain a third level spell slot and meld into stone is our first actual walking through walls ability, allowing us to become one with the stone we can touch for up to 10 minutes or until the stone in question gets destroyed or pass walled. The important part is that you don't necessarily have to leave the stone the same way you entered. So congratulations, you've just become the ultimate dungeon delver as long as you're like going through a cave or something. We already know English, Japanese, and Russian thanks to our starting intelligence, but with multilingual we can add two more languages to our list in case anyone at the Xavier School wants to take a semester in Shi'ar or Scroll as an elective. Lockheed finally gains his final form with Improved Familiar to become a Fairy Dragon, adding Dark Vision and Amphibious to his list of familiar abilities and giving him a sweet breath weapon he can fire off once per hour to give creatures in a 10 foot cone who fail a 4 to 2 save, stupefy 2, and slowed 1 for 1d4 rounds or for a minute if they critically fail their save. Level 9 monks gain monk expertise for expert monk DC and occult spell attacks and metal strikes to treat our unarmed strikes as silver or cold iron for the purposes of taking advantage of weaknesses because even ghosts and devils can't resist getting their literal molecules rearranged. We'll do the homo superior thing and take multi-talented to gain an extra multi-class dedication of our choice and this is the second X-Men I've built with a rogue dedication. Guess she's super popular. Gonna be awkward when rogue turns out to be like a barbarian or something. We get surprise attack to treat enemies who haven't acted yet as flat foot as long as we roll deception or stealth for initiative. We also get an extra skill feat and group impression is very useful when every year you find yourself in a completely new team or on a new planet or in your own past. We can make a impression on up to four targets simultaneously, increasing to 10 people at master proficiency and 25 people at legendary. We'll take the tumble through rogue feat to make a creature flat footed to us on our next attack after we tumble through their space. I'll probably be pretty caught off guard too if a person just walks straight through me. The streetwise feat lets us gather information or recall knowledge about a settlement with our society modifier instead of diplomacy. Honestly, those are gonna be pretty interchangeable for most of the build, but it's a prerequisite for something later. Level 11 monks gain their second path to perfection and pretty much all of Xavier's students have a bit of training in resisting psionic attacks. So we'll choose will for master will saves and critical success results on regular successes. We'll take the fleet feet for an extra five meter movement speed because air resistance means nothing to us. We'll pick up some basic trickery for light steps so we can ignore difficult terrain whenever we step or stride. Probably a good idea to go ahead and retrain feather step at this point. We use our bubbly personality to our advantage with the glad hand feet to immediately attempt to make an impression on a person we've just met at a minus five penalty. If we fail or critically fail, we can attempt again after one minute of conversation, but without the penalty this time. Level 13 monks gain master strikes and graceful mastery to increase our unarmed strikes and unarmored defense to master proficiency. For our ancestry feet, one with the earth gives us a 15 foot burrow speed because in this game, walking through the ground is easier than walking through walls. Also, see, we didn't take the Oriad Ancestry for no reason. 
We'll take expert witch spell casting for a fourth and fifth level spell slot. Freedom of movement allows a creature in touch range to automatically succeed on escape attempts from grabs, immobilizing effects, or restraints for 10 minutes. They also ignore circumstance penalties to speed. Passwall is probably the least flavorful option in our kit since it just straight up creates a 5 by 10 by 10 foot hole in a wall that people and objects can pass through for an hour. Coincidentally, both of those spells were also used by the last X-Men we built for the channel Gambit. Maybe we picked up some pointers with Underground Network. Now we can use our society to gather information from the criminal network of an area we're familiar with. The X-Men is like the most illegal superhero team ever and sometimes we rub shoulders with the Brotherhood or the Hellfire Club when mutants in general are threatened. Level 15 monks gain greater weapon specialization for 6 flat damage on our unarmed strikes and monk weapon attacks since we're master proficiency. We get our third path to perfection for legendary reflex saves, regular fails on crit fails, and only half damage on failed reflex saves because physical attacks literally go straight through us. We're not completely invulnerable though, on the off chance we do get hurt, we have the toughness feat for additional max HP equal to our level and easier recovery from dying checks. Level 16 expert witch spellcasters gain a 6th level spell slot. Flush of Stone is basically our only offensive spell. We pull a Jojo, forcing a 4-2 save on a creature within 120 feet, slowing them by one action for a round if they succeed, or giving them the slowed one condition on a failure with an ongoing 4-2 save on each of their turns, increasing their slow condition by one if they fail, leaving them permanently stuck in a nearby floor or wall if they lose all of their actions. We'll take the Patron's Breath feat for an additional 1st through 4th level spell slot for twice the spell casting fun, or for new spells like Pass Without Trace because how can we leave footprints if we aren't technically stepping on the ground, Shatter to deal 2d10 sonic damage to any unattended item, Familiar's Face to see through Lockheed's senses for as long as we sustain the spell, and Airwalk for one of Kitty's most insane abilities to literally walk on air. For our skill feat, we're grabbing something we probably should have gotten a while ago. The pickpocket feat allows us to steal or palm an object even if it's closely guarded without taking the usual minus 5 penalty because we can go straight through pockets too. Level 17 monks gain graceful legend for legendary and armor defense and master monk DC and key spell proficiency. We also gain adamantine strikes to treat our unarmed attacks as adamantine. Facing through adamantium is difficult for us but not impossible. We'll pick up natural skill for training in two skills of our choice. We've already got the 17 other skills, might as well grab the last two. The legendary linguist feat lets us piece together enough bits of language to be able to communicate on a basic level with any speaking creature we come across. Universal translator, never leave the galaxy without it. We finally get another key spell and the main reason we went monk in the first place with empty body to gain the effects of ethereal jaunt for a minute without needing to concentrate. We basically can do all of the shadow cat things. Nothing material can touch us except for force and abjuration effects, and we can move through any physical objects and in any direction, even up and down. And since this is a focus spell, we can do this basically every 10 minutes as long as we take the time to refocus between jaunts. A full caster could obviously cast us a lot sooner than level 18, but only getting three or four slots per day for this just didn't really feel like Kitty Pride. Level 19 monks gain perfected form to treat the first roll we make for a strike on each of our turns as a 10 if we happen to roll less than a 10. For our last general feat, we'll take Candy Acumen, choosing Perception for Master Perception Proficiency and to really flex that Wisdom modifier. For our final skill feat, we'll take the Legendary Codebreaker feat. Not really much in the game to represent a computer engineer, but now we can decipher writing using our society at normal reading speed, and if we do take our time, we gain critical success results on regular successes, and when we do critically succeed, we gain a word-for-word -word understanding of whatever document we deciphered. For our capstone feat, the Quivering Palm Key spell is Shadowcat's ultimate offensive application of her mutant abilities, literally striking our enemy's most vulnerable organs directly. We make an unarmed strike, and if we hit, we can force a fortitude save against our key spell DC, Stunning the target for 3 actions and dealing 80 damage on a fail, and killing them outright if they critically fail. Technically, we have the option to wait up to a month after the initial strike to force to save, but that's not really in character. Just kill them immediately. But now that we're level 20, let's look at the pros and cons of this build. For starters, we're actually decently tanky, even though that wasn't a goal. With 44 base AC, 250 HP, and over a 30 plus reflex and will save, only certain types of enemies are going to be a problem for us. We're also the ultimate scout and infiltrator, able to travel through walls underground and even through the air with two sets of eyes thanks to Lockheed. Third, we're basically a backup rogue for the party. With training in every skill and the ability to communicate with literally anyone we come across, there's really no obstacle or encounter we won't be able to get our party through. For cons, we don't really have that monk flexibility in combat. Sure, we can use punches and use monk weapons, but most monk weapons don't have finesse, so we'll be falling back on our non-existent strength modifier if we want access to those unique weapon traits. Second, most of our spells are situational at best. 
Sure, Featherfall is a godsend when you actually need it, and Passwall has the potential to bypass any number of dangerous situations, but your party is probably going to expect a bit more out of a martial character with 6 levels worth of primal spells. But honestly, I'm kind of scraping the barrel here for weaknesses, it's hard to make a monk bad, but we've got a pet dragon to boot. Thanks for tuning in to another build, if you haven't yet why not subscribe to be notified whenever we post a new build, and join the Patreon like these lovely people to support the channel directly, and to decide what characters we build next. Until next time, take care, have a good week, and play more Pathfinder.